So I normally play football manager on this channel. There, that's just embarrassing. Okay, we're just embarrassing ourselves. But today, I'm gonna share with you a little trip that I took. Because I went down to Costa Rica to watch Ala Wilenzi play against New England Revolution in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. To Alacuela, Costa Rica for the final night in the round of 16 for the CONCACAF Champions Cup. So this has kind of always been a dream of mine to play football manager and travel to the teams that I manage for. And if that team happens to be in a place like Costa Rica, then that's all the better because it's kind of a tourist destination and I like to surf. First, I flew from rainy Oregon to windy Denver then caught a five-hour flight from Denver to Liberia, Costa Rica, which has turned into one of the big hubs in Central America. Liberia does have a team in the top flight of Costa Rica, but I only had time to drive into my Airbnb and meet the two Canadians who had just built the place one year earlier. A beautiful spot, walking distance to the beach, and only about $100 a night. I had a couple days here before driving into San Jose, and it was spent walking over the mangrove, going to the beach, and getting my feet wet with some surfing. This is the northern region of Costa Rica, it's known as Guanacosta, and it's considered the driest part of the country. I went down here during dry season, but if you really wanted to visit Costa Rica and get the beach all to yourself, come to Guanacosta during the rainy season. So I left early in the morning after a couple days of surfing to begin the five hour drive into San Jose, the capital and main city of Costa Rica. We're in the penthouse suite in San Jose, Costa Rica. And have I got a story for you. But so I flew into Liberia and needed to drive down today for the game tomorrow. And it was like a five hour drive that I just did this morning. And that's what the story is about. Because it's pretty much one lane either direction for the first three hours. The speed limit's like 60 kilometers an hour and everyone's going like 100, or it's like 30 kilometers an hour, and everyone's going like 60. Like, everyone's just speeding. And everybody's passing on double solid yellows, because there's not very many times where it's like a passing block. I pick up the vibe pretty quick, and I'm pretty much doing the same thing. About I left at 6.30 in this morning, and about three-ish, two and a half, three hours into the drive. I'm getting a little bit closer to San Jose. I haven't seen a cop the whole time until I decide to make a little passing move. And as soon as I do it, flashing lights, two biker cops, opposite lane, coming this way, pointing at me, going, you, over. I'm like, oh shit. So I have a rental car and part of the agreement is a minimum ticket when you're in a rental car is $600, US dollars, 600. But so he pulls me over and I'm like, well, he comes out and he can't speak any English. And my Spanish is maybe slightly better than his English, but not good at all. And so he's, he's basically motioning and saying, no, you can't pass, all in Spanish, but I get the gist of it. He said, you can't pass, you have to wait. It's double solid yellow, you have to wait for, you have to wait for a passing zone. 
I go, I know, I know, lo siento, lo siento. I even said, in English, I go, everyone else is doing it. And he didn't know what I said at all. I was like, ah, oh, okay. So he goes, license, passport, rental, rental, C, C, it's a rental. So I get the rental paperwork and give him that. And he goes, okay, seis, cincuentas, dolores. This is the ticket. So $600. I think I said that right. Say sing with us. I go, yeah, si, si, lo siento. He goes, eh, and he motions and he says, it goes to the rental company, blah, 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 blah. And he goes back to the other guy. And he comes back and he's like, you can tell he's like, kind of doesn't want to give me a ticket. But he's like, oh, well, I mean, that's how it works. But so he goes, donde? He points down the, down the road and he goes, donde? I go, San Jose. And then I go, Alohuelense. And he goes, Alohuelense? I go, Si, Liga, Alohuelense. There's a game tomorrow. I'm like, I don't know how to say this. I'm like, oh, I have my phone. And I just turned on roaming or whatever. It's a hundred bucks a month for international roaming from Verizon to pick that up in Costa Rica. And that was getting me Waze or whatever. Waze is the way to go in Costa Rica as far as navigation. He even asked, he's like, Waze? Waze? Let's see, Waze. And, um, and I pull up my phone and I go, yeah, Alahuelense. Uh, partida, the game, Alahuelense on Thursday. And I Googled that and then I said to him, yeah, see, si, see, si, I'm going to a game Thursday. Partida, Alahuelense. He looks back at his other, cop friend, it's the two guys on the bikes. And he goes, eh, hey, you're a footballista. I was like, oh, here we go. And so a trick that I learned, well, this is a trick that I have learned with this story, but it comes from when I talked to the currency exchange guy at the airport. I just asked, I said, what's the best football club in Costa Rica? Like, obviously I know, I know that there's two main clubs and they're considered the Barcelona and the Real Madrid. And the currency exchange guy goes, well, you see there's Barcelona and Real Madrid, right? And I go, oh, I know, it's Saprissa and Alohuelense. So I go, who do you support? Saprissa? And he goes, Saprissa or Liga? I go, Liga? I go, oh, that's what they call them. They just call them Liga. Because it's Liga, La Liga, Deportiva, Sporting, Alohuelense. So people just call them Liga or La Liga. And Saprissa or Liga? Liga. Liga? Ah, buenas. Adios. And so I look, and so I go, okay, well, he said he supported Saprisa. Okay, great. But I use that with the cop, and I look at him and I go, you, Saprisa or Liga? He goes, me? Me, Saprisa. I go, oh, cool, cool. Me, Saprisa y Liga. Yeah, me encanta Costa Rica football. He goes, ah, footballista, footballista. He keeps pointing back to the other cop. And I'm like, okay, we might have some luck here. And then he looks inside and he goes, okay, okay. And he walks back to the other cop. And then he comes back up again and he goes, ah, ah no ticket. And I go, no ticket? Muchas gracias. He looks inside and I've got a box with a bunch of bottles of water in it that I bought. And he goes, agua? I go, see, sí, agua. Oh, you want a, agua, agua? I go, here, give him one. He goes, oh, muchas gracias. I go, yeah, no problem. He goes, no ticket, no ticket. It's okay, no ticket. I was like, muchas gracias. Well, agua, agua, agua. For, and I gave him two, two waters. Gave one to the other guy as well. And then they just, they let me go. Just a la huelense dodged me a $600 passing in the wrong lane at the wrong time ticket right in front of a cop without being able to speak hardly any Spanish at all. So anyways, I roll in to, I go straight to Alajuela, which is north of San Jose. It's like a suburb, it's like a separate kind of city. I go straight to the stadium, straight to the Alajuelense store. I ordered my kit. I'm going to the game tomorrow. Thank you. Six hundred dollars. It paid for itself. This wasn't cheap, by the way. This is like a hundred bucks. 
even in Costa Rica. But it's like full on authentic. I mean, it's umbro, but I'm even rolling my R's on umbro. Man, so that's the story. We're in the penthouse suite. I'll tell you that story another time. Next up, we're gonna do a deep dive on the history. La Liga Deportiva Alajuelense. Because I owe him $600. So here's a historical breakdown of Costa Rica's top flight. Liga de Fútbol de Primera División. Also called Liga Pro América for sponsorship reasons. The league was formed in 1921 by seven members. The first ever champions were Arediano. They've gone on to win 29 titles. And they're the third most successful club in Costa Rica. My new club... La Liga Deportiva Alohuelense was a founding member of the Costa Rican top flight and the only team to never have been relegated. They're also the second most successful club with 30 titles. Their stadium is El Estadio Alejandro Morera Soto, named after Alejandro Morera Soto, who's considered to be one of the best Costa Rican players of all time. He played from 1933 to 1935 for Barcelona, where he scored 63 goals in 76 appearances. He was dubbed by the Catalonian press as El Fenomeno Costarricense, the Costa Rican phenomenon. He would go on to finish his career where he started it, back with Alajuelense. In his second stint alone with the club, he scored 312 goals in 364 appearances over the course of 11 years. Alajuelense have seemingly always been a club with international intent. In 1960, they went on a world tour where they played 24 matches over the course of three months. They started in the Caribbean, went to Europe where they played the likes of PSV, West Ham, and Banaco Strava, and then went to the Middle East where they played Maccabi Haifa and Tel Aviv, then went to Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and finished the tour with three games in Hong Kong. More recently, in the year 2000, the International Federation of Football's History and Statistics ranked Alajuelense as the 27th best club in the world. It's the best ranking any Central American club has ever received. They struggled financially in the latter part of the 2000s, which forced them into releasing regular starters and focusing on youth development. Nowadays, though, the club is debt-free and just celebrated their 100th year anniversary in 2019. Even though Liga has had such success... Probably the biggest club in Costa Rica is Saprissa. They were founded in 1935 and weren't promoted to the top flight until 1949. In their early history, they won the third division undefeated and again went undefeated in the second division. The club has remained in the top flight ever since. Saprissa has won 39 titles in Costa Rica and have won the CONCACAF Champions Cup three times, last being in 2005. They went on to have a stellar performance in the Club World Cup where they finished in third place. They beat Australian club Sydney FC in the quarterfinals, then unsurprisingly lost 3-0 to Liverpool, but finished the tournament beating Al Etihad of Saudi Arabia in a third place match by way of this late free kick goal. So those are the top three clubs, and they're all playing in CONCACAF Champions Cup this season. Saprissa were very unlucky to lose to Philadelphia in the round of 32. Herediano upset Toluca from Mexico by coming back from down two goals to make it through the tie 4-4 four four, and advancing on away goals. Then they just beat the Caribbean Cup round of 16 entrant Robin Hood from Suriname, so Herediano has advanced to the quarters where they will face Pachuca. And they're also currently leading the Costa Rican table. But the game that I went down to watch was the second leg of the round of 16 between La Liga Alajuelense and New England Revolution. Liga were the Central American Cup champions, so they were given a bye out of this round. 
However, in the first leg against New England, they were outclassed, four to nothing. So if they're to overturn the tie, they need to get off to a flying start. I drove in towards Alajuela, about a 30 minute drive from where I was staying in San Jose. Some Ticos saw me in my car wearing my Alajuelense shirt and gave me a thumbs up. Traffic condensed as I got closer to the stadium, but I was able to find pay parking. It was only about a 10 minute walk from the stadium. I found my seat and I learned the exact seat on the ticket is more of a general suggestion in this part of the stadium. There's a saying in Costa Rica, it's sort of a national motto, Pura Vida. It translates literally to pure life. It means something approximating the simple and relaxed way in which Costa Ricans approach everyday life. So I wish I'd gotten more footage from the match, but I was kind of just enjoying the experience and being there, so I didn't really think to pull my camera out too much but I'll give you my match report from what I saw. The Ultras seem to be taking up station in the corner across the stadium. Their chance at atmosphere building over the course of the match was fantastic. So this is actually the first game under a new head coach. The biggest change for them is in the managerial spot. But Costa Rican legend and all of Lindsay legend, Brian Ruiz is the assistant coach. Team came out with fire and intent. Elevated towards the back post. Which got them an early goal. Oh, what a save, and on the rebound they score. Three minutes in, Alakwalense is on the board with their first goal. They just needed to score three more goals. The stands really began to fill in. They probably got to around 11 or 12,000 in the 15,000 seater stadium. Fell right into the lap of Carlos Mora. The first half, they had many chances on the New England net, but the finishing was very substandard. Flip it through. That's a good ball from a tight... Well, that was something. Here's the shot from Mora, who was looking for... By Venegas. Plays it out to the captain. Borges. They got a bit desperate in the second half and kept floating in crosses, but they don't really have an aerial threat. They played two central midfielders, but couldn't really build through the middle much. Unfortunately, Alohuelense's attack just wasn't quick or incisive enough. The finishing on the chances they had was abysmal, and eventually New England got one back in the 80th minute. It was really the only chance they created the whole game. In summary, this tie was there for the taking, but it just wasn't meant to be. If I was a scout or an agent, the best player on the pitch was the left-sided center back, Alexis Gamboa, number 13. He's technically on loan from Belgian side SK Beveren, but started his career at Liga and has been loaned to them since 2021. His stadium atmosphere and experience was great. There was so much enthusiasm from the crowd the entire game, even late when the writing was on the wall. So in the end... New England just needed to protect a four-goal cushion, and they played like it, so they didn't really show much quality. Although Holenze had all the chances, but they just couldn't finish, and eventually they just kind of got squeezed out. They seemed a little bit disjointed. Maybe that's down to new management, possibly, but they're also kind of on bad form. They lost the weekend game 3 to nothing, on top of losing 4 to nil in the first leg, so they did okay all things considered, but they definitely needed to make some changes. Um, I'm, they're a really talented team, though, so I'm eager to see how they finish out the league in Costa Rica this season. And if I had a chance to come back, I would probably come back for one of the derbies between Saprisa and Alohuelense. I had a couple more days in Costa Rica, so I took in some sights and drove back up north, closer to Liberia, since that's where my flight was back out of. Got some more surf, some more sun, and of course, talk to some more Ticos about football. Sure. Today is the last day. I got my tan, my burn, my neck is like destroyed. But yeah, I came down here for the 
soccer for the Liga, a little Valenza game. That was awesome. That was an amazing experience. I came down for the soccer game primarily. I've always wanted to come to Costa Rica. The last two days, that's all I've been doing. Just surf, eat, nap, because I'm exhausted. Eat again, gear up, go back out, surf. Just get blitzed by the sun drink a gallon and a half of salt water and just get wrecked by waves and have a good time. But then the weekend, all the games got postponed, so there was no league games even to go watch on the weekend. Like going into the stadium, getting a feel for Alajuela and watching the game and, and doing all that kind of stuff was the most fun of the entire trip, for sure. Well, I'm back in America. My skin is sufficiently tanned. I got a much needed dose of vitamin D from not seeing the sun in Oregon in four months. I had a good time. And Alajolense couldn't really make a run in this year's Champions Cup. But under my management? Well, that's gonna be a different story. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Adios, muchachos. <laughs>